Alright, this is part two of my review for the um, UL50V. I've actually had it for a couple weeks. I haven't used it very much on battery. I've only unplugged it a couple of times on battery, and my average battery life at this point is 10 hours. It does seem to consistently hold around 10 hours of battery life. I've pushed a little bit more than 10 hours, but I was using it very minimally. I tried um, Batman on it. Um, I just tried the demo, and it was... It, the settings are higher than I probably would have left them, but seeing it handled it pretty well. I, it was fairly playable. <coughs> I've actually um, reinstalled Windows three times on this device. I ran into a bug which resulted in me reinstalling Windows, and the bug happened again. I reinstalled Windows again, and this time I tried using the restore disk that ships with it instead of a separate copy of Windows that I had, and the repair disk actually did not work. It gets through the first disk and says, insert the driver's and utility disk. And so I put in the driver's and utility disk, and then it kept asking for the driver's and utility disk. So apparently their recovery is broken. I also tried the on hard drive recovery before that, and it just popped up with a massive error screen right after it booted into the recoveries. So I was unable to recover it based on any of their recovery means. I don't know if this is common with ASUS or just a bug that I ran into, but I figured that would be very important for people to know that their repair disk just might not work. So it might be handy to have a uh, retail copy of Windows 7 on, on hand. It does have the CD key on the bottom, um, right here, and it's really nice because they put it, they've put it under the shielded plastic, and which is really nice. It fades on every other model of, of notebook. I mean, the serial numbers t tend to fade with heat. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll fade on this one too, but um, they have it on this one, and I think that sh that shielding will probably help it um, a lot. And it's it's bad when your your uh, your Windows number disappears when you have to reinstall Windows, and you're going great. The legal copy of Windows that came with my laptop. I might either, I'm either going to have to go pirate a copy or I'm going to have to go buy another copy for my computer, which is sometimes kind of disappointing. But um, just as a quick demonstration now, I'll go ahead and show you. This is on my G51, which I've had for less than a week. And <laughs> I know it's just blurry, but that's because you can't, there is, the text is unreadable. This is the actual CD key. The keys underneath it, which has faded a little bit less, but nevertheless, it's going to fade sooner or later. Um, as far as it not having Bluetooth, ASUS does make this really cool little device that will plug into your computer, and it's a U USB Bluetooth dongle. And it's pretty small, lightweight. It does not come with this cover. I got this cover with a different thing. I wanted to protect the device because I ended up shoving it in my notebook bag because this device will use battery life. I'm not sure how much of battery life it will use. Some people say that it will take, you know, a few percentage total battery life or overall, like, you know, take like maybe 30 minutes off of your total battery life, maybe an hour. I don't know. I haven't tested it. I only have it along as a means by which to, um, use the pan Bluetooth pan function on my cell phone to give it internet. Because after watching a billion hack fives, I've realized just how stupid you are when you use public Wi-Fi at any place. It is just a bad thing to do. Because you never know when there's going to be somebody trying to hack in your system, and when you're sitting there browsing on public Wi-Fi just doing standard things, it's bad. And when you're trying to, like, you know, <laughs> do bank stuff, uh, IMs, IMs can be all be copied and pasted, you know, anything, any of this stuff can be caught if, you know, you're on a public network. It's, <coughs> it's a scary thing. Just, just wanted to throw that out there. So I believe in using the Bluetooth and the, um, or a physical connection off my cell phone, but I didn't want to use the battery life that, or the battery life on this system to charge my cell phone to use a physical connection. So I decided to get a Bluetooth dongle for it. I got this for like seven or eight bucks on sale. It's probably fourteen dollars from Newegg. Um, brand, or Newegg when it's not on sale plus shipping. 
So it's not that big of a hit to give the device Bluetooth, and if you insist on leaving it in the device constantly, it's no big problem. I did notice the other day that the Express Gate button actually is a GPU switch button. So if you hit that button, it'll, there's an auto mode. There's also a mode that lets you, it also tell you integrated. Now this is ha this is one thing I want to show is it is a very painful hit to try and switch to um, from dedicated to discrete graphics or in integrated. I'm sorry. And as you can see, it it is a pretty nasty hit you know, interruption in your work to do that. And there's a ton of programs that will, could be running that will prevent that switch. So if you're like me and you're just like, oh crap, I gotta go, I gotta go, and you just unplug your device, well, you might not switch back to the integrated GPU. You won't, well, you won't switch back to the integrated GPU automatically. I mean, you can. I usually have to force it to go into battery mode and then wait till it switches and make sure it does because there's certain programs like Steam and a few other programs that will actually prevent your device from going or switching to the integrated or to the dedicated GPU. And the dedicated GPU does use considerably more power, as, as far as I can tell, <coughs> than the integrated GPU. So, just a word of caution in that regard. Um, I haven't performed very much benchmarking on this. I haven't had very much time. I have had a few questions about how it performs um, as terms of an IT student or you know, a few other things. I've also had questions about the screen and the touchpad, and my um, initial analysis of the touchpad and the GPU, or and the screen, are still the same. I, my opinion is that the screen is probably lacking, and probably always will. You probably can adjust it with some of the NVIDIA tools to adjust the color and the brightness, but it always, to me, seems a little bit dim compared to my G51 screen, which it's kind of disappointing because I own two EPCs and it seems like they should probably get a screen in relatively the same quality, but they haven't, which is a little bit of a disappointment. <coughs> I've also had questions about, or like, as regarding to the touchpad, um, I've noticed that you sometimes, you will often have to clean your touchpad before it will even work because you get grease from your fingers or from running your hand through your hair, which will also affect that. And it will affect mouse performance. Sometimes you'll build up a static charge, you'll need to ground yourself in something metal, and sometimes there is, at least in the old days, there was actually a, a uh, device up here, a magnet, which actually, when you close the screen, would uh, discharge the static electricity that built, it, built up in your touchpad, which generally will affect its performance. So occasionally you will actually have to close your screen to to discharge that buildup. <coughs> as far as touchpads, this is one of the worst ones I've used in the respects of, you know, just actually when you're trying to use a device. I've used other touchpads, like on the 9, 901, where the touchpad detects input when you're trying to type. I haven't noticed that with this one, which is nice. I have accidentally clicked, it, clicked once or twice, but usually that was with my elbow or something when I was actually working on a different computer and just had it on my lap. Back to performance for um, an IT student. I, I do have VMware installed on this device, so I have run one or more OSs on this device at a time, and it does handle multiple OSs or running VM and all sorts of other applications quite well. I, I've run um, Linux in the background while running Windows. I played video games on this thing. I've surfed the web. I've done just about everything I can think of so far of benchmarking. Um, or just, you know, for everyday use benchmarking. Um, I probably could try a few other things to benchmark if you guys have something that's a free open source software or something you might suggest you might want me to try and benchmark on the device. I can go ahead and try and benchmark it and test it for you guys. Um, as per, you know, my initial assessment of the notebook is it is a very nice notebook. It's really great. The battery life is exceptional. Although, when you start doing some of the more of the CPU intensive things, you'll notice a big hit. I was noticing the other day when I was actually downloading email, my battery was just draining like crazy. So just be aware of that. Be wary of that. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions or comments. Um, go ahead and feel free to ask them. I'll probably repost another review. I actually want to do a whole scale of testing on this thing. I want to run a test where I run it at maximum usage on GPU and CPU, RAM and hard drive.
and run a stress test on battery with it on maximum settings and on power savings and then just run it on maximum CPU on power settings and on maximum power mode and see how it performs. And then we can get a pretty good glimpse at its battery life. Anyway, questions, comments, leave a question or leave a comment or uh, leave me a message. Thank you.